I'm going to show how to measure the melting point range for a solid product. And in this video, I'll be using the product for the photochemical isomerization lab, which is the cis 12 dibenzoyl ethylene. And here are two examples of what that product might look like after recrystallization. On the right side, you can see that there are much larger crystals, which is a good sign that they're pure, but larger crystals will take longer to melt and will require more energy. So you'll usually end up with a wider melting point range that isn't as tight. Whereas smaller crystals will usually offer a tighter melting point range unless there are impurities that affect the melting point. So with recrystallization, we do want large crystals, but when taking the melting point, what you can do to help you get a tighter melting point range is to use a Teflon stopper to crush up the crystals so that when you put it in the capillary tube, they end up being a lot smaller. And now you have almost a powder of the large pure crystals that you had originally. From here, you can go to the back of the lab to grab an open closed capillary tube for taking melting points. And like the name says, one of the ends of the tube is open for adding the product and the other is closed because that's where we want the product to end up when taking the melting point. To insert some of the crystals, what you should do is press the open end of the capillary tube onto the solid, twisting it between your fingers. And after doing this a few times, enough product should be pressed up into the open end of the capillary tube. Then to get the product to the opposite end of the capillary tube, you can just flip it around and tap the closed end on the counter until all the product has been moved down. If you are having trouble getting the product to move down, you can use this rod found in the instrument room, which is completely hollow. So if you drop the capillary tube through to the bottom, the impact of hitting the ground can help move the product through the tube. Eventually, you'll want a few millimeters of product at the closed end. So if you're not quite there, you can simply add some more product following the same techniques already shown. At this point though, you're ready to set up the melting point apparatus, which looks like this. On the back, you'll find the power switch. And as you turn it on, there are a few things that you can adjust to make sure that it's set up correctly. Initially, the apparatus will be at room temperature. So you'll want to preheat it by adjusting the start temperature. And you'll want to set it to about five or six degrees lower than the literature value for the melting point, just in case there are some impurities in your final product. So in this case, the product melts at 134 degrees Celsius. So I'm going to set the machine to 129 degrees Celsius. And you can adjust the temperatures by pressing and holding down the blue arrow buttons. Once the starting temperature is set, you can also check the stop temperature. And this just needs to be above the literature value for the melting point. But just in case you forget to stop the apparatus once the product has melted, I would set it to just a few degrees above the literature value. So in this case, I'll put it at 140 degrees Celsius. You should also check the ramp rate because you don't want the metal heating up so quickly that you get a really wide melting point range. So usually two degrees per minute is a good rate for that. Now the apparatus is ready to go. So you can press the start button and the light will move up to preheat and the apparatus will begin to heat the metal block to the start temperature that you set. It'll begin to slow down as it approaches the start temperature and the light will go to ready once it is close. Now you can insert your product into the heating block and notice that there are three slots, so multiple students can be measuring the melting point range of their product at a time. Then if you press the start button once again, the light will go to melt and the temperature will rise at the rate that you set, which should be two degrees per minute. Then if you look through the eyepiece, you'll be able to see your product and you're looking for when the solid begins to melt. So when you start to see liquid droplets. You're not going to record a specific melting point because not all of the solid is going to melt simultaneously. So you'll record the temperature when the crystals begin melting and then record the temperature when they're fully melted. And this will be your melting point range. And I'm going to jump ahead a little bit so we can get to that point. But here, if you look at the size of the capillary tube, you can start to see some liquid droplets forming. 
So 132.3 degrees Celsius would be the lower end of the melting point range. Now you should be watching for when the solid completely melts and that'll be the upper end of the melting point range. I'm going to speed the video up a little bit because it took a minute to get there but it looks like the last few crystals completely melted at 134.1 degrees Celsius. So the melting point range for this product would be 132.3 to 134.1 degrees Celsius. At this point, you can stop the apparatus and dispose of the capillary tube in a crock designated for glass only.